What seems lovely is the fact that he'd already talked it through with them. He'd worked out what he was going to do. I think a really big part in our relationship and it working with the children is that everything we've done, we've included them in. So yeah. from the first date, Rio said, you know, I think I want to take Kate on a date, to us moving in, him asking me to be his girlfriend, yeah. everything, the kids were part of it. So it feels like it, you know, that I wasn't taking their dad away from them. It was more us becoming a bit of a family unit. Were they a bit mortified by the way that he asked you to be? He was, girl? they were, you know what, not many people know this, <laughs> um, but, so he said, you know, I want to ask Kate to be my girlfriend. What do you think? We were actually eating a fry up in a cafe in Bromley. And um, he said, you know, I really like you. I really like your dog. Will you be my girlfriend? And they were going, no, she's not going to say <laughs> yes, Dad. Aww. I did say yes, but they were so embarrassed. So, so to begin <laughs> with, sort of getting to know them, because you don't want it to be like a real pressured kind of, you know, that let's all be friends, let's all get to know each other and it's all going to be happy families. Because in reality, that's just not how it works. And you did something quite clever as, as a family. You sort of, you did activities together. Yeah. And then that just became part of everyday life. I feel like what we'd done is if me and Rio would go for lunch at the beginning, we'd then come back and make sure we spent more time with the children. So we might go for lunch for an hour, but then we might come back and go and feed the horses or go to an ice cream shop, go ice skating. So then they thought, you know what, if Kate's here, we get to do fun stuff afterwards. Yeah. So not to change their mindset as in it is fun, it's not me taking your dad away from you sort of thing. Right, At okay. the beginning. Well, you did, I mean, you took it terribly seriously right from the word go, really, because you gave up your career. Yeah, I think when I'd done that, everyone thought I was crazy. My mum was thinking, oh, my God, what's happened to her? Um, but, you know, I felt like I had two choices. I was in this world of, like, lots of drama and it was all very public. And when I did meet Rhea and the children, I thought, you know, they've lost their mum. They don't need another woman that's going to be out everywhere. They need someone mm. that's going to be at home with them to, mm. keep, to you know, give them love. And it, and it hasn't been plain sailing at all. I mean, there's, you've, had, you've had your moments. Discipline's quite a hard thing. And I think lots of step-parents find this, that, that, you know, it's one thing doing the, the school run or putting, doing those sorts of things. Clonk. Don't know what that was. Um, <laughs> Scaffolding coming. I think it might be. <laughs> but but the, the biggest challenge is the discipline because then suddenly they can throw it back in your face. It's like, well, you're, you're, you're not my mum, you're not my parent. They, t they haven't actually said that to me. They've, yeah. At the very beginning, I think one of them said, you know, you don't know how to look after children because you haven't got any. Mm -hmm. And that sounds really silly because it's a small child, but you, it does hurt your feelings of a little course. bit because you really are trying your best. But I think as the time's gone on, it has been a short time, but. You know, they're used to me more and we do have sort of set rules for discipline. So I'll say, right, you've got three chances um, and then I might take something off them that they really like. So if they love their phone, I say, right, you're not having your phone. Or yeah. well, the biggest one is if their dad's at work, I'm, I, I pretend to record them where I record them, I send it to their dad and they're like, no, don't oh, tell really? dad. <laughs> yeah. And that does it. Yeah, that does it. <laughs> and uh, and you know, we, we've, we've followed... Um, the story of, of Rio losing Rebecca in 2015 to breast cancer. Um, and you are also very aware of incorporating her within all of your lives still. Yeah, of course. I think, you know, Rebecca's their mum and you only have one mum. Like, a mum is irreplaceable. So we've done quite a few little things, as in we've got a special room in the house for their mum and their nan. We've just got all photos in and there's a computer in there and all bean bags. And, you know, they might do their homework there or they might say, can you just come and sit in Mummy and Nanny's room with us and we'll just mm -hmm. go there. And we celebrate big occasions, so Rebecca's birthday, Mother's Day, um, Christmas. We'll, we all go to the cemetery together. Rather than it being Rhea and the children, we make it as in we're all doing this together. Mm -hmm. And obviously we do talk about their mum, so I actually know a lot more about their mum than they think. And every now yeah. and then I say something, they go, how do you know that? I yeah. say, oh, I know more than you think. But you yeah, mentioned yeah. also Janice as well, Rio's, yeah. Rio's mum, because that the, was a double tragedy to lose, yeah. lose his wife and also to lose his mum, really very close together. I and and the, and, the, and the kids had begun then to rely on, on Nanny, yeah. hadn't they? I think it's just horrendous. So what, once I met Rio, you know, his mum passed away and she was acting as their mum. She was picking him up from school every day, you know, doing everything with them. Yeah. So it, it's just two major losses. Do you think that you understand sort of step families because of your own own experience with that because you there was points in your life when actually it wasn't such a positive yeah so my, my mum and dad broke up when I was young and I've had a couple of step mums um, and this is a really big point I think as in why we include the kids so much because when I was young my dad got remarried and he didn't invite me to the wedding right, um, okay. and I, I would just never forget that so that's a really big point in you know I don't want the kids to ever felt how I feel how yeah. I felt when I was younger sorry yeah mm.
And of course, this was for you. This, this when I mean, two years ago, you'd never imagined that you'd be suddenly doing the school run, and you'd have these three children, and, and life completely changed for you. It is crazy. Like I didn't even cook dinner really for myself. I lived on my own. I'd go to my mum's. I'd go out for dinner, and now it's like I'm cooking dinner all the time, and you know, doing the school runs. And at first, I was not a good cook, and the kids were like, "This is okay. You need to up your game." <laughs> but now they've said my lamb chops are better than Rio's. So now good. Yeah, Very we're good. getting there. Yeah. Yeah. So as you have um, have been all involved in the conversation, and the the kids were involved in you moving in and him asking you out and all that sort of stuff, has it come up in conversation about you know getting married, having babies? It's really funny because at the beginning, I could never imagine that the kids would talk about it. Um, you know, it started with Tate when I went to the school saying, right, that's my aunt that's picking me up. And then he was like, that's my dad's girlfriend. And now wow. he says it's my stepmom. And now I'd say on a daily basis, they go, when are, we, when are you giving us a brother or sister? Do they, they really? They say, you had a baby yet? I said, no, not yet. <laughs> and they say, when are you getting married? And we want to be the bridesmaid and we want to do this. So it's actually really lovely, like, how far we've come. And they are leading the conversation. They are, every day. Dad, are you going you gonna to do it yet? Mm. And he's like, oh, God, I've got three kids and Kate's thinking, <laughs> when are we going to do it? Uh.